Hey, it's Aaron. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about climate change. And this time I'm going to do a bit of a debunking video, but it's not going to be really a debunking video of the science. I'm going to leave that in the description box below because many people have done a much better job than I ever could on that front. But I am going to talk a little bit about <laughs> a very frustrating argument that I've heard over and over and over again, perpetuated by people in my area. And now I've even heard it from one of those empty suit bastard ass politicians that we have in government right now. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So today it turns out that Greta Thunberg, noted climate change activist, has shown up in my backyard, not my personal backyard, in my geographic backyard, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And it caused all kinds of controversies. Now, Greta Thunberg, for those of you who don't know, is a climate change activist that started the Strike uh, for Climate um, initiative that a lot of people have been paying attention to in the last few weeks and months. They have done a lot of very interesting, very big demonstrations all across the entire world, and it got multinational media attention basically everywhere that she has gone. And now she's even come here to my home country. And I find that very interesting because it sparked all kinds of <laughs> conversations and perpetuated some insane conspiracy theories. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Obviously, there are some goods that came of this, like the Satuna Nation. Uh, they are a native reserve. They came out saying how good it is that Greta was able to come down to Alberta so they could actually talk about how we could further the ideas of making Alberta uh, a leader in uh, combating climate change and hopefully making us one of the main people that are trying, main people, one of the main peoples, I guess, that are trying to reduce our climate emissions within the next 10 years. And I think that's uh, fantastic. But of course, it wasn't all great news when she came down a lot of people had some serious problems with it because that's alberta and everybody in alberta not everybody in alberta but every professional politician in alberta is just a little bit fucked so <laughs> they came out saying all kinds of really useless things one of which being the conservative party saying that they are not even going to try to talk to greta because they didn't come she didn't come to them to uh, say that she was coming down, so they have no interest in reaching out to her. Extremely indignant of them, I think. Extremely petty, as far as I'm concerned. If they actually were strong with their convictions, if they actually believed in what they said, they'd have absolutely no problem with confronting the science that Greta is presenting, but they would never want to do that, because in a public sphere, if the Conservative Party was to go and confront Greta and her science on this issue, they would likely just get their faces slapped around by a child, and that doesn't look good in the news, so they're probably not going to do that. But it also, her arrival, led to another interesting politician, uh, Clugston of Medicine Hat, uh, a fuckhead, to say something that was incredibly tiny-brained. Now, Medicine Hat, beautiful place, lovely people, uh, way too many cops. I have been down there a few times in my past, and I believe that they have something like the most police per capita of any city in Canada, while having a relatively normal to low crime rate. It has risen in the last few years, I'm not going to say that it hasn't, but the amount of police presence in that city is absolutely disgusting. Uh, they even have themselves a fucking tank. It's not really a tank, it's actually an armored personnel carrier, though it was portrayed in the news as being a tank, and they have absolutely no right to have anything like that. These are the kind of police officers that can't even... I'll, I'll give you an example of how these police officers are basically the most useless in the entire world. There were two bike cops that rolled up on some kids that were drinking at the bottom of a, of a coolie, and they proceeded to get off their bikes and go down and give these kids tickets. While leaving their bicycles unattended, two more kids came up and stole the police's bikes and fucked off with them down the street. Now, of course, I'm sure the police did get their bicycles back afterwards, but uh, these are the kind of people that we're dealing with here. Uh, like I said, people in Medicine Hat, fantastic people. A lot of friends there. Hi, uh, all of my friends in Medicine Hat. Uh, Cullen, you're awesome. Uh, Liam, you rock, dude. But uh, yeah, the professionals, uh, the professional politicians and the uh, state actors in that area are fucked. 
So Clugston of Medicine Hat came out with an incredibly tiny brained opinion about this. They said, and it actually mirrors what I've heard a lot of people saying in my real life, that climate change and CO2 production is good, actually. We've gone from the, fa from the, from the place of blaming everything else in the world for climate change. Now we are finally focusing in on humans and saying, yeah, okay, fine. We finally agree. Humans are causing climate change. They are raising CO2 levels. Some of them will admit that anyway, but it doesn't matter because CO2 is actually good because it's plant food. It's a building block of life. Oh my goodness. This is probably the worst argument uh, for climate change that I've ever heard. Now, I've heard all kinds of arguments all the way from the sun being the cause of climate change, which would be total bullshit, which is total bullshit because you can tell if it would be the sun that's causing climate change, being that the outer atmosphere would be heating up faster than the inner atmosphere underneath the greenhouse effect caused by CO2, which is not what we find. We find exactly what we would expect to find if the, if the warming was caused by CO2, which is the atmosphere below uh, closer to the ground becoming warmer and bouncing back and forth and not actually being able to radiate out. That's what we find. I've heard other uh, arguments saying that it's volcanoes or that it's tectonic plates shifting as though climate scientists throughout the entirety of history haven't, you know, thought to themselves, oh yeah, right, I forgot that the world actually exists outside of CO2 production, um, which is a moronic way to think about things in the first place. And it doesn't actually explain anything because obviously CO2 production, though it is a major contributing factor, also couples along with all of these other production, all of these other uh, problems that are happening as well. So yes, volcanoes are producing a certain amount of CO2. They always have. We actually have graphs that go back millions of years that explain how the production of CO2 has risen and fallen. We can actually see in core samples, in the ice, how CO2 has risen and fallen throughout the years. You pull out a core sample, you see the little bubbles that are inside of the core sample, you pop one of the bubbles, you test, uh, you, you see how much carbon uh, CO2 is in those uh, little bubbles, and that's how you tell how much was in the atmosphere at the time. We're able to know how much there was throughout the course of history. And it isn't like all of a sudden climate scientists just forgot about that data and were like, oh, uh, we didn't know about the volcanoes. We didn't know about, I don't know, cow farts. We just assumed that it was all CO2. No, we can demonstrably show that it was CO2. And like I said, I'll leave a link in the description box below uh, from a very uh, smart scientist. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but uh, they go through the history of CO2 production on Earth and explain how that is almost intrinsically linked to the climate uh, to the climate change differences that we see throughout history. So all of these ideas throughout my lifetime, throughout the time that I've been doing YouTube, have been brought up. Most of them lazy. Some of them, <coughs> excuse me. Most of them lazy. Some of them will just really ill thought out. But this one, this idea that climate change and CO2 is actually good, it's probably one of the laziest arguments against climate science that I think I've ever heard. It just looks at all of the science throughout history and says, yeah, that didn't actually exist. Things like the greenhouse effect aren't actually real. You can't independently verify that it's actually a real thing. Of course not, even though that's been done by millions of scientists all across the entire world for decades. It looks at the fact that plants can only absorb a certain amount of CO2 in their lifetime and says, yeah, that's not real either, even though we can look through the biological and geo uh, geological records and see in fossils that plants had more stigma, uh, sorry, had more stoma to absorb the CO2 when there was uh, less CO2 in the atmosphere than they did when there was more CO2 in the atmosphere when they had less stoma. It's just obvious, very easily identifiable and verifiable facts that this whole theory just completely denies even existing. Obviously, this is extremely false. This is probably the worst argument that I've ever heard in my entire life, but I hear it over and over and over again. And this time, it was from a fucking politician. This isn't n new, obviously. All politicians throughout history have made bad takes and incredibly uh, dull, uh, tiny-brained arguments about all sorts of things when it comes to science, religion, 
ethics, <laughs> economy, everything. So I'm not uh, shocked that a politician would make this argument. But it does make me want to reiterate again and again that this is why we can't have these morons, these hapless, useless individuals controlling our society when they have absolutely no idea what the fuck they're doing. None of them have any fucking clue what the hell they're talking about. Why are we allowing elected politicians, business people, and fucking CEOs to make decisions about our world, about science, when they don't have fucking degrees in science? They don't even understand or believe that science even works. Of course, science is just fine for them when they need to go out and get medical treatment, or they need to... Uh, you know, confirm something that they already have a predisposed bias towards, but whenever it goes against that bias, you know, science is basically useless to them. This picking and choosing, deciding when and where we decide to use the science and when it is uh, applicable and when it isn't applicable is just obnoxious. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And the overwhelming majority of all climate scientists say that this is bullshit. And this more fella the guy that said that he would drink fucking glyphosate because it apparently doesn't hurt anybody. I believe that I talked about more. Did I talk about more? Anyway, this idea came from this more fella um, that uh, has been going around for years and years talking about how climate change is fine and everything is fine and there is nothing wrong with anything in the world. Uh, he's one of the founders, founders of Greenpeace and uh, he's basically come out saying that, you know, CO2 is good for the plants, actually. He's a total useless fraud, charlatan, bot, uh, business corrupt piece of shit individual, and nobody should listen to a word that he has to say. He even said that glyphosate, Roundup, was fine to drink. If you wanted to drink it, you could drink a whole fucking glass of it, uh, and you would be totally fine, even though it's been ex like sh extremely linked to causing cancer. So the guy that came up with this uh, whole scenario is flawed and wrong. Um, the people that are perpetuating this argument in political spheres and on the ground, just regular old climate conspiracy theorists, they're wrong. And uh, the fact that we have to allow these politicians uh, that have absolutely no idea what they're doing into positions of power is very frustrating to me. So... Anyway, that's my show. My name is Aaron. If you do get a chance, please check me out on Patreon. Every dollar does help fund this show. And God help us all. Thanks for watching.